Miss Ayer, come here. Well, come along. I'm not going to eat you. You are Jane Eyre, the new governess. Mrs. Fairfax didn't warn me you were speechless. Oh, who are you, sir? Your employer. Mr. Rochester? Mr. Rochester. Oh. Adele was right. She told me you looked like a frightened rabbit. Adele has her own way of describing people, sir. Oh, and how did she describe me? I don't think it's worthwhile to repeat what she said. She called me a monster, I suppose. That was not the word she used. Well, something like it, no doubt. I know that I... that I frighten her. I frighten most people. So why do you stare at me so? Do you find me handsome? No, sir. Oh, I mean... I, I I was startled. I I thought for a moment that, that I was a ghost. The ghost of Thornfield Hall. Oh, please forgive no, me. I this had house no has idea. enough ghosts in it already without my adding to them. Necessary. Your hands, you haven't burnt yourself. No, sir, but you need some fresh air. <coughs> Is it out? Fortunately, if you attended to your duties, these incidents wouldn't happen. I was asleep. I have to sleep sometime. You get back upstairs and keep this door locked. I have been wondering, nonetheless, if you might consider a proposition of her, I grant, a somewhat unusual nature. Oh? Something that may take you away from here. To London? Out of England altogether. Somewhere as far away as India. India? Yes. I have been asked by my bishop to take up missionary work there in a somewhat remote province. It would be difficult, perhaps dangerous, but challenging. I have been thinking that with your unusual gifts, your natural aptitude for languages, well, it came to mind that... Uh, uh, that, uh... Yes, Mr. Rivers? Uh, that you might consider the possibilities of, uh... Of, uh, uh, of such a position. You mean that I should become a missionary? Uh, in a sense. Uh, well, it was just an idea, you see, which had, well, it had occurred to me. Well, I'm most flattered that you should think me qualified. Oh, you are. You are. And naturally, if you agree, we should have to consider certain uh, amendments in our relationship. I hope you understand to what I refer. No. Oh. Although I, oh, we, uh, should be carrying out our mission among savage tribes, unblessed by Christian ethics, it would be necessary, purely from a sense of form, you understand, to, uh, to, to set an example. Are you by any chance asking me to marry you? Well, yes, it had occurred to me that under the circumstances, such an arrangement, purely, you understand, for the sake of convention, might, uh, I had the idea, be generally advisable. Thank you. Thank you. That is indeed a most elevating proposal. Oh, I'm glad you appreciate it. Oh, I mean, I'm glad you understand the exigencies which prompted it. Oh, most certainly. You will consider, then? I will consider. Thank you, Miss Eyre. Thank you. So, you were waiting for your people when I saw you in the lane. For whom, sir? For the men in green. It was a proper moonlight evening for them. Did I break through one of your rings that you spread that damned ice on the causeway? The men in green all forsook England a hundred years ago. Not even in Hay Lane or the fields about it would you find a trace of them. I don't think summer, harvest or winter moon will ever shine on their revels more. You shall walk up the pyramids of Egypt at your peril, you advertise. 
I wish I'd only given you a sovereign. Give me back nine pounds, Jane. I've a use for it. Oh, so have I, sir. You little niggard. Just let me look at the money again. No. You are not to be trusted. Look as though I'm all right. What were you doing, looming out of that mist like a witch? You're a mad woman. Do you want me to go and get some help? Blast! No! Come here, I want you to help me out. I'm not sure that's the correct thing to do. Your leg might be broken, sir. I can fetch someone from where I live at Thornfield. It's just at the bottom of the lane. No need for that. It's just a spread. Come here. Come on, for heaven's sake, woman. Give me your arm. You examine me. You find me handsome, Miss Eyre? No, sir. <laughs> a direct answer for a direct question. I didn't mean to say... Try to modify your answer. It was an honest reply. Sit down. So, what faults do you find in me? Does my nose not please you? It's not. Or are my eyes too close no, set? Or is it that my ears are too large? Or my forehead's not too It is too a large? fine forehead. I have... Appearances of little consequence. It is the person within that is the attraction. Oh, I see. Well, it's my character that you find unattractive. What I meant to say was, certain facets of your character are somewhat unpleasant. At last, I've been waiting for you. Oh, we're leaving, I see. Didn't I just know you'd desert me? Really, Jane, you are so predictable. Couldn't you be just a little more original? I'm talking to you. Where are you going? Away, sir. Where? Please let go of my arm. Not until you tell me where you're going. I do not know where I'm going. Oh, anywhere, so long as it's far away from me, is that it? And why? I'll tell you why. Because you were only interested in becoming Mrs. Rochester. That's why. Please give me my back. Oh, you were never in love with me, Jane. You were in love with the idea of being mistress of Thornfield. Admit it. You're no better than Blanche Ingram, running away like a spoiled child. I mean, you can't hide your way. I thought you were mature, but you're just a child who has no idea what real love is. I would have done anything for you. Anything. I was prepared to commit bigamy because I knew that being married was important to you. And they could have thrown me in prison, I wouldn't have cared. But I just wanted to make you happy. Please let go of my arms. Look me in the eyes and tell me you don't love me and you can walk free. Say it! 